Who's got the next question? Ma'am. So um, these days we have just quite a few more choices about what we can use in our software projects. And so I'm wondering whether you have any, like, a couple principles that you might use to evaluate what you bring into a project that you're looking for. That's a, that's a tough question. And I think my answer to that will have changed over the years. So, so the question was, you know, how do you evaluate or justify what tech you bring into a project? And there's a lot of factors that play into that. Um, certainly, we want to use the shiny because it's fun, and you know, we want to do that. Um, but it depends on the use case. You know, in a lot of a lot of cases, especially if it's a smaller uh, mom and pop shop or a smaller organization. You want old, boring tech. You want something that you can plop there and it will just work and nobody has to keep up with the latest, you know, third decimal point point release to make the bloody thing work. And, you know, that's fine. Uh, there's other instances where you need to be literally on the bleeding edge because you have to get that last ounce of performance or that, you know, whatever it, it might be. So that's the kind of thing where I think you need to look at kind of a snapshot of, okay, what's, what's the context now? You know, what, what is the user, what does the customer actually need? What's the best tool for the job that'll do that now? But then look at that over time. Are they gonna have to maintain this? How hard is it gonna be to get talent that knows that technology? How hard is it gonna be to maintain that? How hard is it gonna be to deploy that? You know, whether it's, you know, on containers now or this or that, or, you know, how is this going to evolve over time? And is this the best choice that's gonna match that, that flow? Um, that's the real question. Because I think one of the traps we fall into a lot is if we even bother to look at all these influences and all the context, we take a snapshot of right now. And that's great. What about a month from now? What about next year? What about five years from now? What's gonna happen with that? If I had a nickel for every time a developer decided to go slog some log entries off to a database file, and never clean them out. And then five, 10 years later, some old piece of code is there just horking over. What is this not, right? So, you know, little things like that, and it's kind of an extreme example, but we do things like that without considering what happens to this in, in 10 years, 20 years, right? Because I think we subconsciously think, oh, this isn't gonna be run and still by then. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that will be replaced long by then. Not always. Um, I literally have some, some bash shell scripts that are in excess of 30 years old that still run. Uh, I still use, somebody still using them. Uh, hey, thanks for joining us. Um, so yeah, you gotta, I would say, look at the axis of time in addition to, to everything else for fitness and capability.